In this video, I'm going to go over the coincident constraint in Autodesk Inventor. Now the coincident constraint is used to make two parts of your sketch touch one another. So it could be two points or two, um, two sketch features, whatever it is that you want to touch, the coincident constraint will lock them together. So we can find it right here. You can see on the ribbon where my mouse is circling around, it's in the top left out of these 12 constraints. So I'm going to select it by left clicking on it. And for example, what if I want the end point of this line to touch the end point of this line? So I can coincident constraint this end point to here. And the coincident constraint, the symbol for it, is this little yellow square where those two things are touching. When I'm done, I can right click and choose OK to turn off that constraint. So now this point on my sketch here is actually connected. I didn't just eyeball it. I didn't draw it so it looks like they're connected. But there is actually a constraint connecting those two to create a closed loop. Now the coincident constraint is not always used just to make two points touch. What if I want my circle to touch the line on my sketch here? So I could coincident constraint, and if I want the edge or the circumference of this circle to touch this line, I could say, okay, let's coincident the edge of the circle to this line. So what it will do is it will move it, and you'll notice I had to grab the point on that line, it will move this circle or it will grow the circle to, sorry, enlarge, enlarge or reduce that circle, whatever is needed, in order for the edge of the circle to touch that line. And again, we get the little symbol pop up here, the little yellow square saying that these guys have a coincident constraint. Now what I mean by grow or enlarge is if that center point was locked in over here, then it would have to make the circle bigger in order for it to touch that line. Or vice versa, if the center point was locked in over here, it might have to make the circle smaller. Now, let's just undo that. Now, one mistake that I see a lot of students do is when they want the center point of the circle to touch the line, they try to grab the outside of the circle like we just did. And you'll notice when that happens, the center point isn't actually on the line there. So we're going to do a coincident this time to say the center point of this circle, which I just clicked on, needs to touch this line. And you'll notice I can select the whole line now. And then we'll get a coincident between the center point and that line, and I can still change the diameter or radius of that circle by clicking the edge and dragging it. Now, one handy use for the coincident constraint is when you need to line up your shape with your center point of your whole sketch, or the origin point, I sometimes call it. So here I'm going to use the coincident constraint. And let's say I wanted the bottom left corner right down here to be locked in to the center point for my sketch, so the point where my y axis meets my x axis here. It's that little yellow dot that's on your sketch by default. So we can use the coincident constraint to move the bottom corner of my sketch here to this point. And you'll notice when I do that, everything that already has a size dimension on it, so all of these size dimensions here, those went black because they're now fully constrained. They have their size and location locked into place. Now prior to learning the coincident constraint, one common way people would move this corner to here is to place two zero dimensions, just like so. But you can see how much longer it takes and like six times the amount of clicking, plus then you end up with these two ugly little zero dimensions on here that are kind of cluttering up your sketch. So we can see that a coincident constraint is much neater and much cleaner and it does the same result. So that's how we use the coincident constraint in a 2D sketch in Inventor.